want to give you a very good promise this morning. That if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, and even if you're not, this can be true for you today. So if you're here on a faith journey and you've not quite yet put faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, let me tell you why it's the best decision you'll ever make. Because you will never go through life alone. So some of you here, listen to me, some of you here, 2024 is rocking and rolling, and some of you is just sort of rolling, right? And that you might find yourself in a hard season this moment. You might find yourself facing opposition. Anybody ever feel opposition? Can I get a witness, right? I want to let you know he's on your side. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. I heard a pastor say one time, that's like God's sheepdogs. Goodness and mercy, they're always right beside you. They're moving you toward purpose. They're moving you toward what matters. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. In the strong, matchless name that has all authority and all dominion. And Lord, I pray you just win wars today that you had set people free, Lord God. I I pray that you would allow us by the power of the Holy Spirit to see you, Jesus Christ, fully, that the word of God would move in power. It would shatter the rock. It would change our hearts. We welcome your presence. We welcome you. Hey, just right there, if you're sincere about this, just say to the Lord, I want to see you. Say that. I want to see you. I want to see you in your word today. He'll hear that. If you got questions even about God, why don't you be bold enough to just say, hey, if you're real, make yourself real to me even now. So we welcome your work today and we pray it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. You can get a seat. They're setting up an illustration. Don't worry. Ain't nobody about to sit behind me. It's not a new thing. All right. If you got a Bible, turn it. I'm in a good mood. Y'all better watch out. You better watch out. If you got a Bible, and I hope you do, turn to John chapter 1. We're going to start our journey through the gospel of John this morning. We will spend the majority of this year, 2024, walking through the gospel of John. And before you go, "Uh uh-oh, that's a lot of weeks. We do have some mini-series dispersed throughout the year that we'll tackle some topical, specific things. We'll spend the majority of it. So for those ADD folks in the house like me, we'll get some time that we can look at something else, all right? But for the majority of this year, we're going to walk through the gospel. Gospel of John. As you're turning there, I want to tell you one thing. Hey, don't miss next Sunday. Don't miss next Sunday night specifically. We have these quarterly moments called Linger Nights of Worship, 6 p.m. Next Sunday night. This is, this is our heart behind it. We want to just slow down and give a night, give around an hour or so to just be in the presence of God to worship him. We're going to have some moments in next Sunday night. It's going to be special. We're going to ordain some new deacons, y'all. Come on. We're going to lay hands and pray. Y'all are not as excited about that as you, you should be. And I, I say that it matters. And I'm going to actually speak to that for a few moments of why it matters, why having deacons in your body matter and, and their role is going to be awesome. And then we're going to take the Lord's Supper. We're going to remember the body and the blood of Jesus. That we're going to slow down and take the Lord's Supper together. And then we're going to just be in his presence. We are finishing a fast this next week. Come on, give meals and moments. I know you get more excited the closer it gets to the end, right? I know it's y'all out. So I just want to encourage you, even if you haven't given moments yet, join us this week, man. Pray through those prayer guides. Pray through that little hanger that's on your window. God is hearing our prayers and answering. So be a part of it. It's not too late to join us, but we're going to spend some time next Sunday night just to listen and give you a chance to even say maybe some things that God has spoke to us. Now this morning we're going to start our journey through the gospel of John and John has some unique aspects to it. There's, there's, there's not a book quite like the book of John. I know each one has its own expression and things that's unique to it, but the gospel of John helps us uncover things about Jesus that we don't know yet or that we don't see fully yet. One of the uniquenesses of the Gospel of John is to got a built-in purpose statement. That before we jump into John 1, 1 through 5, let me give you what John 20, verse 30 and 31 says. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. Meaning, like, there's so much more that Jesus did, we couldn't capture it in one book. I I love what the Scripture says. I, I, I imagine if we captured everything the Son of God did, the whole world couldn't hold it. In this moment, John says, let me give you the purpose behind this letter. Let me tell you the heart behind why why you have this in your hands. 
But these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John, the author of this book, this being the beloved disciple, not the Baptist, says there's many other signs that Jesus did, and every sign was saying Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. But it gives us the two primary purposes of this book. This whole book, hear me now, is beckoning us to believe. This whole book is beckoning us to believe that Jesus is the Son of the living God. It is shouting on every scripture and from every page, look at one person. Look at him highly exalted and lifted up. There's none like him. Now, let me tell you the danger. The danger is a religious belief, is that we believe to a certain extent or level. Anybody ever been up into the mountains? You know, and maybe you had that moment where they put between two high places, they put a bridge. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't talking about a concrete. I'm talking about ropes and wooden planks. You know what I'm talking about? And you can stand and look at that bridge, ropes and wooden planks, and you say, yeah, man, I believe that'll hold me. Well, that's a certain kind of belief, right? There's another kind of belief in which you walk on those wooden planks to the other side. Let me tell you what the gospel of John is not saying. Yeah, 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 just look at Jesus. Don't he look good? Believe what I'm saying. The gospel of John is saying, step out onto the truth of who Jesus is. Like immerse your whole, bank your eternity on who the Son of God truly is. Bank your every day. The book of John is saying, walk this way and walk with him. And it starts in verse 1. That we might have life in his name is the promise. I'm going to give you a principle. You ready? I'm going to give you that. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm telling you. I've been waiting all week for you to get here. As we come to believe in him, we'll receive life from him. Anybody want to believe more in Jesus in 2024? I mean, more fully, anybody wants some more life in his name? The life of God permeating. I got a promise for you. If you'll go on this journey with us this year through this gospel, we'll see him and we'll receive life from him. Verse one, you ready? Here we go. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning. Now, I studied words this week for you, not because I'm a Greek scholar, but because I got Bible software, baby, all right? The word beginning means origins, it means source. It means start. It says in the beginning, and then it gives us another word that matter, was. Was means preexistent. Meaning right here in this moment, the scripture is saying someone already was in the beginning. I'm telling you, come on, deep end stuff. Someone already was, meaning someone existed before everything started. This is bad grammar, but this is great theology. You ready? Meaning someone always was. Someone always was. In the beginning was who? The Word. I love that John 1.1 echoes the same thing that Genesis 1.1 says. In the beginning, God Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning, God. John 1-1 says, in the beginning was the Word. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit has given John in this moment. In the beginning was the Word. The Word there in the Greek is logos. And that Word would have landed in that audience like no other Word. Let me tell you what it did. It connected to the heart of the Greek, and it, it connected to the heart of the Jew. And what it was saying in that moment, John writing this letter to his audience is that Jesus is after everybody. Amen. Jesus is after, he didn't come for the Jews alone. He came for the Greeks. He came for every people, nation, tribe, and tongue. That was a profound statement out of this disciple's writing. Everywhere that we read the word, the word, you could put the name Jesus. We know this because the whole context. So it could read, in the beginning was Jesus. Jesus, meaning that when things begun, when the creation was established, y'all go with me there, you got to be, have a little imagination this morning. When creation was established, Jesus already was. <laughs> that Jesus didn't show up on the, in the scene in the nativity. That he didn't show up even in creation because Jesus already was. 
Meaning, you ready? Jesus didn't come into being because Jesus, here's the principle, has always existed. Jesus has always existence, existed. He didn't come into existence. He didn't come into being because he's always been. I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but hold on for a second. We could spend the rest of our life trying to unpack this central truth, but listen to me. You got to see him at the beginning so we can see him right now. You got to see him at the beginning so we understand the scope of who he is. In the beginning, keep walking through the word. Keep walking through the scripture. Let's eat it up like honey in our lips. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Now, there's many times that the English lands exactly like the Greek, and then there's some times where the English is like, we ain't got a word. I I love that about it. It's like, I I don't know how to say this. And this is one of those moments. Robert Cook, a great theologian, wrote about this, the, the lack of expression that the English has for this powerfully. That phrase means more than merely the word existed with God. It gives the picture of two personal beings facing one another and engaging in intelligent discourse. So listen to me. Let me tell you what has always been true. That before anything even began, the Father and the Son were in face-to-face relationship. That the Son didn't show up later. That the Son has always been in the presence of the Father in full fellowship. Hear me. Lacking nothing. Jesus has always been with the Father. Man, do y'all listen to me? Can we see him this morning? Start seeing the Son of God, not some religious figure, not some relic, not some cultural thing. The cross that has always been, the cross that has always been in relationship with God the Father. You know how we often say, oh, I've known them forever. Only they can say that. Amen. That's funny right there. <laughs> That the Father and the Son have known each other forever in face-to-face relationship, fellowship. Jesus has always been with the Father. In the beginning was the Word. Can we see him? And the Word was with God. And you ready? And the Word was God. Herein lies, you ready? The beauty of and the mystery of the Trinity. That Jesus wasn't merely there in the beginning. Jesus wasn't merely with God. That Jesus, you ready, is God. Everything that can be said about the Father can be said about the Son. If you see Him, you've seen the Father. Now, y'all hold on. You ready? You going to jump into the deep end with me? We worship the triune God. One God, three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. One in essence, three in person. You say, Kyle, explain that. Just did. (laughs) Listen, I I love my favorite quote about the Trinity is this, and actually Ben Boyd helped me find this quote this week. Let me give you a quote from a great theologian. The Trinity, try to understand it and you'll lose your mind. Try to deny and you'll lose your soul. Our God, hear me now, wants us to know him, no doubt. But to believe that we with a finite mind can fully understand an infinite God is the height of arrogance. Listen to me, you don't want a God you can fully understand. You want a God that can be truly worshipped. I want to encourage y'all. You hear me now? Leave some room for wonder in your worship. Leave some room for wonder in our worship. Just don't try to change what it says. Let me tell you what the scripture does not say. And there's a religious branch, Jehovah's Witness, that will say, and this translate right here, that Jesus was a God. That's not what the scripture says. He says that he is God wasn't a God. He is God. Always has been. And to change that one word is eternally damning. You can only be God 
if you've always been God. Come on, man, I'm about to preach myself happy and run around a little bit. If I had a B3 organ behind me, that's when it would hit right there, right? You can only be God. If you've always been God, I told you I'm in a good mood. You've always been God. John reinforces this more with this creation narrative. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God. Literally, it says, he was in the beginning with God, verse 2, and all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. He was there and was a part of creation from Jump Street. Jesus was right there with the Father. I want you to imagine this. Right there with the Father when they looked out at nothing and said, let's make everything. When he and the Father looked out at nothing and they said, let's make everything. See, the Son of God in the creation account, it says all things were made through him and not one thing was made without him. In the beginning, in Genesis, it says that all things were spoken into existence by the Father. In Colossians 1, speaking of Jesus, it says in verse 15, He is, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. He's the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Spoken by the Father, come into being through the Son. And hey, by the way, let's not leave the Holy Spirit out of this. Genesis 1-2, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. In creation, you have the fullness of the Godhead. you got the Trinity working in unity. Perfect fellowship in the existence of all things. But in the center, because we're talking about John 1 this morning, in the center of creation is the cross. Jesus is co-equal in the work of creation. Everything you've ever marveled at over in creation, you ever had those marvel moments? You talk, come on now, enjoy it. Maybe right now you marvel and there was some heat, right? <laughs> But you ever had some marvel moments where you just went and you went, well, look at that. I'll never forget, had the privilege to go to the Amazon River. If you've ever been on the Amazon River, it's, it's wild. 115 miles wide at the mouth when it runs into the ocean. Slightly bigger than the Mississippi. All right, I'm just going to throw that out there. But I remember a moment I'll never forget. We were on a houseboat and we were going into different areas to help with church planning efforts. And we're all sitting on top deck of this houseboat. It was actually when I was here, it was actually some of the other men in this room who were with me. And everybody was going to the first level to eat dinner. And I felt the Spirit of God just say to me, just stay up here. And we were in this little small tributary. And I didn't realize we were about to hit the main body of the water. And we get to the main body of the water and the sun's setting on the Amazon. And you could see the reflection of the sun so much so in the Amazon, you didn't know where the water stopped or started or where the sun stopped and started. It was this mirror reflection of it. And in my spirit, I just heard this, Jesus made that. Y'all look at me. You never had a moment that you marveled at that Jesus wasn't majestic and sovereign and sustaining. Seeing him in the work of creation will change the way we worship over the work of the cross. Because the cross that made a tree would crawl on it. The cross that made a tree would be crucified on it. The cross that made humanity would die for it. The one that made the DNA strand, the one that created every cell, would come and allow himself to be wrapped in flesh. By the way, he's going to make all this right one day. <laughs> the one that created it can restore it. Somebody say hallelujah. He's going to make this all right. This dying earth, listen to me, will be restored one day. He's going to make all things new. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Now, you're going to find this throughout the 
book of John, life and light are his constant, consistent themes in the gospel of John. You want to know why? Because it's humanity's most desperate need. I'm going to give you a massive statement about our precondition. I'm telling you about our precondition. Pre-Christ, this is what we have hardwired into us. Without Jesus, all we would know is death and darkness. The two things, listen to me, we fear the most. Ephesians 2, 1 says this, and you are dead in your trespasses and sin. We We need to rightly respond. If you want to marvel over who he is, remember what's true about us. We weren't merely bad people in need of rehabilitation. Y'all lean in. We were dead people in need of a resurrection. You and I, listen to me, we weren't merely bad people that just needed to get a little bit better. We were dead people that needed life. We were spiritually dead, spiritually lacking life, incapable of bringing ourselves to life. We couldn't make ourselves alive. We were dead, and death means separation. Now, all of us have sat in moments where you stood over a a casket. And in that moment, there's something unsaid that's just rightly known and acknowledged. Their body lay there, but they're gone, right? The shell remains. The soul has departed. Nobody's ever had to teach anybody that. We just know that intuitively. It's hardwired by God. That death brings about separation. Here's the truth. Death in our sins brought about separation from God. And we couldn't find our way back to life. And to make bad news worse, when you die apart from Christ, when someone, you experience what is called the second death. And the second death is to be eternally separated from God forever. Bad news gets worse. We were not only dead, we were in the dark. Matthew 4.16 says this, The people dwelling in darkness. Now, I know the last part of that verse is good news. We'll get there. Anybody scared of the dark? Can I get a witness? Last thing, I know, but no, man, I ain't. Let me put you in the dark cave for a while, huh? <laughs> At the very least, we know this about the dark. It's disorienting, isn't it? We would at least all say, at the very least, we are dangerous in the dark. We stumble about, we stub toes, right? We can't find our way, listen to me, anywhere. Spiritually speaking, I need you to hear this about you. Listen to me. You were dead and in the dark. There was not a person that has ever lived on this planet that would have found their way to the true light on their own. You could have never conjured up a moral moment enough to find yourself back in the manifest presence of God. We were dead and in the dark. Anybody ready to get back to John 1? John 1, 1, 4 says this, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In us death, in him life. Everything else becomes alive. Listen to me. At conception, you became alive physically. At salvation, you come alive spiritually. Y'all hear me now? Jesus never had to become alive because he is life in him listen to me emanating out of jesus life emanating out of jesus he is the ultimate source of life listen to me he's the ultimate source of light no need of sun or moon in heaven one day because he's the light his life brought the opportunity for light for all men Over 2,000 years ago, y'all listen. Over 2,000 years ago, the light of eternity stepped into this darkness. So that the whole wide world might get a chance to catch a glimmer of God. That's the war. 
2 Corinthians 4, 4 through 6 says, this is what's happening in this room right now. This is what's happening in Rankin County. This is the war that is waging in every nation, tribe, and tongue. In their case, the God of this world, speaking of Satan, has blinded the minds, not the eyes, the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, For what we proclaim is not ourselves. We don't preach us. We preach Jesus. But Jesus Christ is Lord. For we ourselves are servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shown into our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Anyone that has ever come alive is because the light of Jesus shined in their minds and awakened their heart. Can you see him this morning? If you can't see him, look at me. A war is waging spiritually for your eyes of your mind, the ears of your heart to be open. Y'all look at me. I've been praying for you all week. Some of you, today is the day to see him. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus is the life. And the light that everyone needs. There's nothing like God's life. There's no, listen to me, you can't fabricate it, you can't fake it, and you sure can't find it anywhere else. I pray you feel the warmth of his presence this morning. Can you sense him? Can you see him? I love what Pastor Matt Carter says Jesus came to give us life to reconcile us with God, changing our present condition and our future destination. <laughs> changing our present condition and our future destination. And then it says, verse 5, and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Let me tell you what light has never done. Lost the darkness. Come on now, right? You never turned the light on and you actually had electricity and the light bulb in and the darkness said, not today. Light only, listen to me, wins defeats darkness. I want to ask you a question this morning. Anybody in a dark season, even as a follower of Christ, you can find yourself in a heavy moment. Can I get a witness, right? Let me tell you what I find in those moments. I just need more light. I just need the light of his presence, man. You ever ever need more? Listen to me. Don't be afraid of the light. The light always exposes, but listen to me. It also always transforms. It doesn't always take away the pain, but listen to me. It always reveals the problem. It always shows us what is so. We've known this since children. We long for light. Every scary season, we long for light. The ultimate expression of Jesus shining the light into the darkness is in the power of the resurrection. Even as Jesus was dying, y'all want y'all to remember that moment. You remember what happened as Jesus was dying? A great darkness covered the world. Where Jesus was being crucified, let me tell you what it said. It said it was like midnight at midday. And when he died, I want you to imagine, it seemed like the light had went out forever. He was buried, and you know Satan and every demonic force celebrated. You got to imagine when he breathed his last breath in his physical body, his disciples had to be discouraged, right? It looked like it was over. But then as was prophesied and as was planned on the third day, here comes the light. And the light defeated death. The light defeated darkness. Because he is the resurrection and the life. To stake a claim and put a flag in the ground and saying, humanity will never have to fear again death and darkness because I have overcome. 
In light of that, interconnected, imagine verse 14. And the word became flesh. Dwelt among us. So we would never have to wonder again, what's God, what is God like? Because we got to see what God is like. That he knelt down by, beside the most broken people. He pursued those in great pain. And we have seen his glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Listen to me. Jesus has the grace that we need to have. And also the truth we need to hear. He's both. Jesus is the grace we need to have. Anybody need grace? He's also the truth we need to hear. Now I'm going to land with the illustration and we're done. And I want to go kind of make a precursory statement. Every illustration falls apart when you start talking about the Trinity. So don't holler at me or send me an email saying, Kyle, I don't know. I already know I don't know. All right. They all, I'm trying to explain the Godhead, but I want to give you a picture real quick. Man, if I can make it through. I want you to imagine these three chairs represent the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. One in essence, three in person. Trinity, say, Kyle, explain it a little bit more. It's all I got. But from eternity past, look at me, they have always been in perfect fellowship. Listen to me, they were not lacking anything. They had perfect, listen to me, they had perfect joy. They had, they had perfect love, man. They had perfect completion. It wasn't like the Godhead was lacking anything. But they looked out at nothing and they decided to make everything. And you know what the pinnacle of their creation was? Us. They said, let us make humanity in our image. And I want to blow your mind for a minute. Do you know what the triune God did? He invited us to sit in fellowship with him. One rule, one rule. You can't be God. You can just be our kids. We invite humanity to the table to be in fellowship with the one true God. Yet what did we do? The serpent lied, right? He deceived. And what was the deception? You can be like God. That you can be just like them. You can have the same authority seat they have. And we ate the apple, and in that came death. Separation. So look, we were cast out. And the Father, Son, and the Spirit could have lived in perfect unity completely separated from humanity and justly judged us and separated us in hell forever. That could have been our story, but the Father sent the Son to come after us. He did not equate equality with God as something to be grasped, but laid it aside to come and live as a human Though fully God, live the life we couldn't live. Take the sin of humanity on himself. Die a sinner's death and be buried. Yet on the third day, he defeated death in his resurrection. And ascended back to the Father and said, Father, let me introduce you to Kyle Rena, who's going to come to know me at 19 years old. Said your name. And I, though here, am seated with them in heavenly places, is what the scripture says. That's where I belong. That's where I'm going. That's where you're going. Still don't get to be God. John 17, though, tells me in the high priestly prayer of Jesus, but I do get to experience oneness. 
I do get to experience this. I'm going to ask you something. Religion will always keep you out here and God over there. Jesus came to get you back here. Anybody ready to come home? Anybody ready? Listen to me. If you are a follower of Jesus, anybody to recognize where you are now? Oh, don't he deserve our worship? Don't he deserve our praise and our lives? Bow your heads for a moment. Where are you today? Our pastors, our ministers are going to come. We're going to be ready to minister to you. He might be in a dark season. You might know Jesus. If you're here and you're a follower of Christ, glory be his name. But maybe you just need a fresh season getting to know he who is life and light. Maybe you need new life, renewed life. Maybe you just need a touch from him. We don't come here to play religious games. We come to get into the presence of our king. Would you allow us to pray with you about anything? We'd love to do that. If you know you need help today, why would you not come and let us pray for you? He came for us. Let's just move toward him. Biggest question I'll ever ask you, though. I'm asking you right now. Are you seated with him in heavenly places? Anybody here today want to put faith in who Jesus is and what he's done? Anybody here need to be saved today? Look at me. Anybody need to come home? I ain't going to embarrass you. Nobody else is looking around. But I'm going to ask you to be bold for a second. I just want to talk to you. If you know you need to put faith in who Jesus is, if you need to believe and might have life in his name, would you be bold for a second? And I'm going to ask you right now, look up at me and just raise your hand. Say, Kyle, I need that life. I need it. Awesome. Praise God. Man, be bold. Look at me. Raise it and look at me for a second. I'm waiting for you. All that happened so that you could come home. Anybody else? Anybody else? Man, listen, he's saying, I love you. I'm in pursuit of you. Come on. Great. Hey, today is the day of salvation for you. Best day of your life biggest day of your life right there in your heart cry out to him right there talk to him maybe say something like this Jesus I confess my brokenness that I've lived in death and darkness but I want to follow you I put faith talk to him I put faith in your perfect life sacrificial death powerful resurrection I want to follow you now listen if that's you this morning most important decision of your life let us walk with you we're family now would you let the family know let somebody know you came with come talk to one of us we would be honored to for the rest, we would love to pray with you about anything going on in your life, anything going on with your family. Don't miss this moment. Lord, we love you. We love you. Thank you that you have turned things around. Do it even now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. If you give us the honor, we'd love to pray with you about anything.